Hello everybody, it's Wayne here. Um, thought I'd do a quick video, show you my setup for when I take pictures for eBay and Etsy and whoever else. Um, I hope if you've not, if you will watch the last video, you'll have a chance at winning a face jug. I've not had that many entries. I've had a, right many folks looking at it, but um, don't miss out on your chance. So if you've seen this video, go back to the previous one and give a chance. About five more days left on September the 10th is when I will do the drawing. And so don't uh, forget to do that. Okay. Um, here's, let me go ahead and take the camera, show you what I've got. Um, I've got a graduated background, as you can see. And I'm going to just put my video camera right above my regular camera. So that shows you sort of what it would look like. And it's nothing fancy. I've got a couple of 2x2 two two tiles, ceiling tiles on each side. Uh, to use to reflect the light. I've got just a plain old white sheet on the top to keep the fluorescent light from above from interfering and I've got one fluorescent light um, if you'll let's see, show you here straight above me and I've got it turned off so that helps with the color um, and here's my camera I have a Nikon uh, 31 excuse me, not 3100, it is a um, 5100 and it is, uh, let me just sort of show you what, how I do this. Okay, let me turn it on there. And what I've done is I've got it set up in the guide mode and you'll see in here I just uh, select shoot and easy operation and then I go down to close up and then it says start shooting and it turns off uh, and we use the viewfinder save my battery as you can see my battery is a little bit low um, but you'll see I've got a light on each side shining towards the um, tile and that reflects the light. I don't have, as you can see, a lot of a shadow there. So I'm going to go ahead and take a picture. Let me back up while I'm doing it. Here we go. You can see what I see. And as you can see, the best you can with the video camera, takes a pretty good picture. And I might crop it a little bit to take a little bit of space but that does a pretty good job um, before I got the Nikon camera I just used a regular uh, point and shoot digital camera it did a good job as well unfortunately I didn't have the graduated background I went and bought it it is a piece um, four foot by six foot I believe and uh, I think you can get it probably $30, $40, somewhere there about, maybe even cheaper than that. You can probably buy one a little bit smaller <clears throat> that would be, to be a little bit cheaper. But that's the one, when I went to the camera store, that was the only size they had. So I went ahead and got it, and I figured, hey, I can shoot bigger pieces for it. Um, and you, it's sort of hard to see with my setup, but I've got some PVC pipes set up at the back on a little stand that it's uh, laid over top of. Uh, to hold it up and the um, tile on the side is just got some clamps uh, holding it as well uh, it keeps it from falling and <clears throat> I just use a regular tripod uh, the tripod I got from my camera is a little cheap tripod it's nothing fancy or expensive so it doesn't take a whole lot uh, little uh, work lights or sheetrock lights as, as I call them um, construction lights you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot, wherever, uh, fairly cheap. Light bulbs <clears throat> for them, now I've got a 
light bulb that is a natural light, regular fluorescent, uh, not fluorescent, a uh, regular incandescent bulb. Uh, they are slowly going away, as most of you probably know. But I have found a fluorescent daytime light bulb that I like pretty well. I don't remember the, uh, the brand. I thought maybe I had it, but I don't. Uh, the box down here, but um, I found one. And you can go to Lowe's Home Depot and find one, and it's pretty good. It's a good, pretty good white light. It's not doesn't have the the yellow tinge to it. That seems to be with than the um, than the regular fluorescent bulbs do. Now, <laughs> I'm just learning on this camera I've got here. It's a uh, it's a SR SLR camera, uh, so that's why I use the guide setting. It works pretty well. Um, I have tried some of the other. Uh, custom settings um, but the guide works pretty well it's easier uh, and then some of the other ones and so it, it does a pretty good job uh, main thing to remember is when you do close-up pictures or using light is you don't want the um, flash to be on so if you're using a regular point-and-shoot camera uh, you just make sure you turn your uh, flash off and use the micro set setting um, works pretty well uh, if not, just the auto shoot normally does pretty good. When I did mine, I used the auto shoot because this is not a macro is really real, real close, and this is not really that close. It's pretty close, um, so you might find that that may help you a little bit better. So I hope that helps you uh, if you need to take some pictures of your pottery, um, and that will um, give you a little little tips of what to do. And so until next time, I'm going to uh, take a few pictures, and then after I get through with that, uh, I'm going to see if I can turn some jugs, and I'll probably do a video of me turning a jug. I'm, I need to make some face jugs, and so I'm going to make some jugs so I can work on them tomorrow, hopefully, uh, start putting faces on them. So also, uh, I've got a link to my uh, eBay uh, account. I'm going to list some, some of my smaller face jugs on eBay. I don't have any larger pieces um, available right now. So I've got uh, several made up that just need firing and I have not had a chance to do a firing. Um, one last thing is I've had a few uh, comments ask about the Indian face jug and the Confederate face jug. Uh, the unfortunate Confederate face jug uh, I do not have. Uh, he did sell uh, and I forgot to do a video before I sold him. So I'll see if I can get a picture. So if you see a picture now while I'm talking, I was able to get the picture and put on there on the video. So that'll show you. So, But I've still got the Indian face jug. And let me stand up here. And let me move some things around. He's a little dusty. But... Um, I've got to refire him. That's the reason I'm not finished him. And uh, that's sort of what he looks like. He was in a cool spot in the kiln, so he didn't get hot enough. Uh, and another thing is, you'll see, I don't have the the crow on him. Is the crow um, the wings? The way I had it sitting, the wings fell down and now he will not fit on the Indian's head so I may just have to settle for the Indian I've got someone who already wants him uh, as soon as I can get him fired and so I've got to hurry up and get that done so I'm going to try to by the end of the week uh, have a glaze firing to do and I'm going to stick him back in there and hopefully get him back up to temperature and get him uh, fired so and this is just a few I'll oh, just see y'all a few things I've got. I've made some of my little face jugs and so forth. Um, a little, little bird feeder. Some other little jugs. Piggy banks. Um, a little mouse that blowed up that I made. Uh, he burst in the um, bisque fire, but my wife liked him, so she stuck him and glued him back together. So he just sort of can't be glaze fired, but he's. She liked him, so we just stuck him up there for looks. Um, so, um, got a little more pigs, little froggies. That's something that my son likes to make. Ryan, little frogs. We're doing different colors. 
Um, here is a an, an ash glaze that I tried. Um, I've still not my other ash that I've did the video. I've not got to it yet. I've mixed up some test batches and um, getting ready to uh, test those when I do my glaze firing. So, anyways, until next time, y'all have fun playing in clay, and we'll see you. Bye.